Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video, taking a look at Bitcoin, some price action, some news updates, and trying to see where exactly this cycle may end. So I do believe this will roll into 2022, looking at all the different data that is out there and who is yet to allocate. So if you enjoy the content today, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also turn on those post notifications. And for those of you currently not using a VPN, make sure you get yourself one. There's a link in the pinned comment down below with a nice healthy discount for Surfshark. And this will help you maintain your privacy on the internet. And you should have this on at all times when interacting with crypto based sites. So here's the BTC chart here. It's a thing of absolute glory. And I think we've just got to pinch ourselves a little bit at the fact we are so lucky to be involved in a double bubble cycle. We had this huge parabolic advance from I'd say September time here, all the way through January, February, March, and up until around the middle of April, we peaked out around 64,000 bucks. We seemingly run out of steam at this point. And then of course we had the China FUD and the crash that ensued. But since then we've really recovered well. Any thoughts of a dead cat bounce were eliminated with this rally up here. And now we recently broke previous all time highs at around 67,000 bucks being hit. So it looks like Bitcoin is set to continue with this uptrend. And typically when we break all time highs and we go into price discovery mode, it does last for some time. But a lot of questions are being asked, how long can this cycle go on for? There's a lot of theories around the lengthening cycle theory from Benjamin Cowan as an example. And this is something that is starting to align for a lot of people. If we just look at the previous break of all time high, so the 2017 all time high at around 19,000, 20,000 bucks, depending on how you measure it, was around here when we broke it. It was around the second or third week of December. And as soon as we broke that, we went on an absolute moon mission here and we just went up and up and up. It was a hell of a journey. But this lasted for a total of around 120 days. So roughly four months, we managed to rally for Bitcoin and we put in gains of around 200% there. So this is kind of a projection I'm just using from the break of the new all time high here at around 67,000, which came just last week. And we're just gonna pop this over onto the chart, project it out and see where we exactly land. Now, bear in mind, there are many ways that you can skin a cat. And with charts, of course, you can make anything manipulated to, to kind of show the outcome that you want it to fit. So this is just a very simplistic way of looking at things, roughly going out 120 days, which is about four months and then going up around 200%. So let's just take us around here. So if we have a rally similar to the last time we broke previous all time highs around that 19, 20K mark up to 64K, that four month rally, 200% gain, what we would see is something like this. 200% from $67,000 takes us to roughly $200,000 and some change and also pushes us all the way out to around mid February. So this is a duration of time that I would expect this cycle to potentially last for. So a 200K K price point is somewhere that is kind of aligning with other thoughts in the industry now and it kind of maps this mental model that I've just put on the screen there but let's look at some other updates here with some other indicators so tech dev put this out on Twitter this guy's really worth a follow if you haven't followed him already on point with many of his calls and some of his takes on BTC and the wider crypto markets but this shows the RSI, the Relative Strength Index. And these circles across here represent where we've hit 90 or above on the Relative Strength Index. And the RSI, when you're up in this kind of region, anything above a reading of 70 is considered overbought. So this is a kind of period in time where you do not want to be buying. This is when the herd is really entering the market and the long-term holders should be selling. But a reading of 90 has signified tops whether that be the market cycle top in this case, or just a local top in this case in early 2013. But every time we come up to this level, we're seeing these kind of tops. And it even happened here in 2021, we went up to a reading of around 90, and then we had a local top with that first bubble being burst in 2021 around April time. So from this chart, we can see the RSI is still ways below the 90 percentile reading. And so there seems to be a lot of juice left in the tank here. And for any of you who watch the LEO Trades channel, Crown, who's been doing his TA recently, suggests that if we go to a 90 RSI reading this cycle, that would put the Bitcoin price at around 380,000 bucks, which is a hell of a target. Uh, one that 
I personally don't know if we'll actually go in here, but if we do get up there, it will be something to behold. Now, another chart to look at here is the BTC chart versus 2013. And it has been mapping 2013 very closely over the duration of this cycle. Now, this chart was posted by Raul Pal here, another one that you have to be following as his perspectives are always on point. But essentially, this has been mapping it nicely. So he's been updating this chart on a frequent basis pretty much every week. And we're still continuing to follow the white line, which is the 2013 chart, the yellow one being the current price chart. And it would show that we'll have a parabolic advance towards the end of this quarter into the new year. However, this shouldn't end at this point because this yellow line for our current cycle is actually slightly elongated from the 2013 one. But as you can see from this chart, the white line peaks here slightly earlier in the cycle than our peak in April, which came here. And then the bottom that came in after this peak during that double bubble cycle came in around here. And as you can see, ours came in quite a bit later. But the distance from peak to trough and peak to trough was roughly three months for each. But as our dip came a lot later, and it seems to be a good few months later, this would see us continue on into maybe January, February, March of 2022. So some of these stats are aligning slightly on this front with an extended cycle. So in that thread, Raul goes on to say, this is not a certainty, it's a probabilistic outcome. For me, 20K ETH and a 200K BTC is a shoe in with a 70% plus chance of happening. What outperforms and how this plays out is anyone's guess. So he's reckoning that we can get a 200K BTC, which kind of maps out with what I posted here. And from other interviews he's done, his rough timeline is that that peak would come around March of next year. So not too far off this 17th of Feb deadline that I've posted there. Now this fits in with his thesis that there will be the ETH 2.0 upgrade coming around March of 2022, which could be the major sell the news event. And also this comes just before tax season. Most of us have to pay taxes at around April time. And so typically we're gonna to have to sell assets off prior to that. So a lot of stars are aligning on that front. So what happens once the BTC bubble bursts and we hit a peak price point? And how are we gonna know if we've hit a peak price point? Well, on that front, I think we're in a really good position here with many really solid traders on crypto Twitter who will be very eager to get all the clout points by getting the precise top nailed. You're gonna see people like Kaleo, Tech Dev here, Pentoshi, and other traders that I've been following for quite some time who will be super eager to nail that top. So I think we'll get a general good consensus around when the top does come in. And typically what we see at the end of a Bitcoin bull market is that we have a big drawdown in BTC and then a massive movement from all that BTC liquidity that's been soaked up into the altcoins. So we then have roughly a three week window where the Bitcoin tops then makes a euphoric movement into the alts. And this will be a huge rush of money into the altcoins and you'll just see charts going absolutely skyward and your portfolio number just going up stupidly. So having an exit plan will be crucial in the face of emotions, which will tell you not to. So this is a problem that happens with all humans. We get very greedy. And if you're just waking up every morning, refreshing your Blockfolio account, for example, and seeing the amount of money going up and up and up, you're not gonna want to sell because selling is essentially selling your dreams. So you do have to have a plan in place. Now, this is something I've been thinking about for quite some time here, and I'm starting to nail down my kind of exit strategy from the market, and I will bring this to the channel once I've kind of polished it up a little bit more, but it's gonna be very crucial to have an actual plan and that you're not stuck like a rabbit in the headlights once the crypto market goes into that bubble euphoria moment. So some major headlines here. This one is kind of, you know, a bit of a nothing burger in one sense, but also quite powerful in another because we're seeing this recognition of Bitcoin in a major way through mainstream media. We're seeing it through politicians, senator like here, like Mr. Rand Paul, just saying things like reserve currency of the world when talking about BTC. And when you think about units of measurement, so we have meters for distance as a globally accepted term. We have degrees for heat. Well, we have at the moment dollars for money denomination, but surely we should all have a universal form of money and that should be Bitcoin. And this is something I think we will move towards over the long term. At this moment in time, it seems like the political climate is kind of on its way out. A lot of very elderly people in charge calling the shots. But as the millennials come through, the Gen Zs come through, and the digital world becomes everything, 
people are going to be using digital currencies and probably wanted to own their own private money in the form of Bitcoin. So this is where the hyper Bitcoinization will come into play. And things like saying reserve currency of the world for Bitcoin will actually be a popularized term because what we're about to see is that anyone who's opposing Bitcoin is probably on their last legs and will be voted out during the next batch of elections. And actually having a pro crypto outlook is something that does get you reelected. And most people are just career politicians. And so they'll go with the crowd here. And crypto is definitely gonna be that future that we're all moving towards. So epic stuff to see such a big statement being made by a US Senator here in the face of this tweet that came out from Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, stating that hyperflation is going to change everything and it is actually happening. And of course, the life raft away from inflation and primarily hyperinflation is Bitcoin with its deflationary monetary policy or disinflationary, that depends how you look at it, but getting yourself onto Bitcoin into the crypto markets into money that can't be easily manipulated by centralized authorities is the way to get ahead of this cycle. Because it does seem that hyperinflation is coming. And as we move into the winter months here in the West, we're gonna see that a lot of inflation really hits home because energy prices are through the roof here in the UK. And a lot of people are gonna see their bills going up 50% plus. I've even seen double being quoted for some individuals. And when you actually feel that real inflation, you realize that something really is up and you're gonna be looking for an exit strategy. So I think as winter comes around, this is also gonna help extend the cycle because a lot of people are gonna be cottoning on to the fact they need a hedge against this inflation and what do people do over Christmas? They socialize, they talk about what they've been doing that's been going well. And for most people who've been in crypto for some time have been doing very well indeed. So this being brought up by Jack here, and I think that this is something that is scary for many, but you will see that the Bitcoin life raft is something that many swim towards. Now, next up, this news article here, which shows that MasterCard is now allowing any merchant or bank to offer Bitcoin and crypto services. So as Mike Novogratz puts here, this isn't small news by any means. This is huge news, in fact, and this is something that previously, you know, we're in quite a bullish area of the market right now. So even the positive news is all just coming together and maybe we're not digging too deeply into all these amazing stories that are happening, but this is massive news because MasterCard is one of the biggest payment processors in the world. And what we've seen with other payment processes and fintechs, you've got the likes of PayPal who have been quick to adopt cryptocurrency. We've got Visa buying up crypto punks. Clearly these guys are on the crypto train. And now MasterCard, you don't wanna be blockbusted. You've gotta step your game up and ensure that you're offering the services that the people want. So this is coming now off the back of a partnership here with Bact. So MasterCard to offer crypto debit and credit cards. The global payment network will soon expand its cryptocurrency services to customers in a partnership with digital asset firm Bact. So in a statement, they said this, we want to offer all of our partners the ability to more easily add crypto services to whatever it is they're doing. Our partners, be they banks, fintechs, or merchants, can offer their customers the ability to buy, sell, and hold cryptocurrency through an integration with the backed platform. Again, this is making it very easy for the average Joe to get involved with cryptocurrency. Thinking back to 2017, just trying to get my money into crypto was a real hassle. There's just so many on-ramps and off-ramps right now. And trusted custodians, to be honest with you, holding your crypto funds rather than holding your private keys for many will be an easy solution through integrations like this. And it's just opening the floodgates for many people to pour in. And I think when Bitcoin hits 100K price tag and it's all over the news networks, people can literally FOMO in at any instance because it's literally gonna be at their fingertips. So MasterCard will partner with publicly traded digital asset firm Bact to offer crypto as part of their loyalty rewards program. So this means customers who use their cards at hotels or restaurants can convert their points from spending into crypto in the future. So MasterCard customers will be able to buy, sell, hold digital assets through custodial wallets powered by Bact. And so receiving some kickbacks, some perks here, in crypto as well is going to be an epic thing as people can essentially DCA into the market just from using their rewards points. 
And this is what happened to backed holdings since this integration happened. Just yesterday, it was trading at $9 and it's now just hit $50. So it's literally just gone up and done a 5X like an altcoin, absolutely pumping here, which is incredible to see. So crypto integration is a green light for the stock markets. So anyone running a big firm and who wants to make a bit of a crypto play and they're a publicly traded company, you can see what's gonna to happen to your stock price. So you're actually incentivized now to onboard cryptocurrency. Now this from CoinShares here, the digital asset fund weekly flows. So of course, last week we had the approval of the Bitcoin futures ETF. And as you can see from this chart, the amount of flows into crypto has gone up like an absolute rocket here. I mean, it's absolutely eclipsing the previous weeks and it just looks like an absolute skyscraper on the chart. So here we have the flows by individual assets. Overall, there was 1.47 billion in inflows. This was the largest on record. Second February of this year, which totaled 640 million. So more than 2X the previous all-time high for weekly inflows. And the inflows year to date is now at $8 billion, surpassing 2020 with just 6.7 billion. And we can see a load of different cryptocurrencies getting some good treatment here. So these are listed as follows. We had roughly $8.1 million flow into Solana, 5.3 million into Cardano, and BNB got about 1.8 million respectively, but 99% of inflows went into Bitcoin. No surprise there with that ETF. And what have we seen on the chart recently? Solana went from like 120 bucks to around 220 bucks over the last fortnight. This is because you're seeing big money flow in. 8.1 million of spot demand is a lot of money and they've got 78% of their total coins actually staking right now. So most of the coins are actually locked up. When you have a fixed or scarce supply of something and demand flows in, the price can only go up like a rocket. And this is what we're gonna see with a load of different assets and especially Bitcoin. The supply crisis is coming. We're seeing the supply crisis for Bitcoin, for ETH, and now assets like this on layer one blockchains, like Solanas, like your Cardanos, your Lunas, all of these different cryptos are going to have a real reckoning and big price action to come. So super, super exciting in this space right now. We've also got this report here that a South Korean pension fund is investing in the Bitcoin ETF. These are one of the first movers to publicly do this. And this is the KTCU, which stands for the Korean Teachers Credit Union. Uh, just to briefly go over this one, these guys have roughly $40 billion in assets under management. They have not yet determined the size of their investment into the Bitcoin futures contracts, but it does look like these guys are willing to take some risks. They have around 10% of the current AUM in alternative assets. But you're seeing the early movers here, the Korean Teachers Credit Union, getting in there and starting to allocate towards Bitcoin ETFs. So big money flows are definitely entering the market now. And we're generally seeing that this is ramping up. And this is the wall of money many people have been talking about. And it is coming very slowly, but very surely. And this was also highlighted here by Kevin O'Leary on the Pump podcast. I'll leave this in the description below. Really worth listening in. But the main point that he was making here is that sovereign wealth funds, specifically the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, are very much interested in crypto, but they have not yet allocated. So in this chat, he goes on to say that once they do allocate, you will know about it because you will literally see it on the chart. These guys have billions upon billions of dollars that they will put into the industry and this is yet to come. And he thinks this is a slow moving process. And so this again, factors into that extended cycle into 2022. You've got big players who want to enter the market, but there's a lot of legal hoops that they've got to jump through and a lot of documents that you know they've got to pass do their compliance and all those good things before that they can start allocating. But once they do start allocating, we're gonna see those floodgates open. So I think we're gonna be very busy here all the way into 2022. So it's definitely a good time to make sure we're rested up and ready for what could be a long extended cycle here. So I hope you enjoyed the content there, going through some of the market updates for Bitcoin, some of the bullish catalysts on the horizon and why I think we're due for an extended end of cycle into early 2022. And who knows, if bullish catalysts just keep appearing and more money keeps just flowing in, we could see a double, triple, quadruple peak cycle. I don't wanna to get too bullish here, but essentially we could become like the new S&P where we have these 
parabolic moves upwards, bit of a pullback, and then a parabolic move again, essentially the super cycle theory that many have talked about. But it's gonna be very important to continually take profits on the way up. Don't get too greedy. Make sure you have cash on hand for the inevitable dips that do arrive. If you enjoyed the content today, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.